okay? And so this is the foundations of what's called traditionally liberal political theory and Newtonian physics. Now, in the 20th century, we had a, a revolution that was initiated at the beginning of the 20th century and which is still going on. It was begun with the invention of relativity theory and quantum theory and merging them together to make the final quantum theory of space and time and gravity is the culmination of that, something that's going on right now. And in this universe, there's nothing fixed and absolute. Zilch. Okay. This universe is described by being a network of relationships. Space is just one aspect, so there's no meaning to say absolutely where something is. There's only where it is relative to everything else that is. And this network of relations is ever evolving, so we call it a relational universe. All properties of things are about these kinds of relationships. And also, if you're embedded in such a network of relationships, your view of the world has to do with what information comes to you through the network of relations. And there's no place for an omniscient observer or an outside intelligence knowing everything and making everything. So this is general relativity. This is quantum theory. This is also, if you talk to legal scholars, the foundations of new ideas in legal thought. They're thinking about the same things, and not only that, they make the analogy to relativity theory and cosmology often. So there's an interesting discussion going on there. This last view of cosmology is called the relational view. So the main slogan here is that there's nothing outside the universe, which means that there's no place to put an explanation for something outside. So in such a relational universe, if you come upon something that's ordered and structured, like this device here, or that device there, or something beautiful, like all the living things, all of you guys in the room. Okay. Guys in physics, by the way, is a generic um, term, <laughs> men and women. Um, then um, then you, have to, you want to know you're a person. You want to know how is it made. And in a relational universe, the only possible explanation was somehow it made itself. There must be mechanisms of self-organization inside the universe that make things, because there's no place to put a maker outside, as there was in the Aristotelian and Newtonian universe. So in a relational universe, we must have processes of self-organization. Now, Darwin taught us that there are processes of self-organization that suffice to explain all of us and everything we see. So it works. But not only that, if you think about how natural selection works, okay, then it turns out that natural selection would only make sense in such a relational universe. That is, natural selection works on properties like fitness, which are about relationships of some species to some other species. Darwin wouldn't make sense in an Aristotelian universe and wouldn't really make sense in a Newtonian universe. So a theory of biology based on natural selection requires a relational notion of what are the properties of biological systems. And if you push that all the way down, really it makes the best sense in a relational universe where all properties are relational. Okay. Now, not only that, but Einstein taught us that gravity is the result of the world being relational. If it wasn't for gravity, there wouldn't be life, because gravity causes stars to form and live for a very long time, keeping pieces of the world, like the surface of the Earth, out of thermal equilibrium for billions of years so life can evolve. In the 20th century, we saw the independent development of two big themes in science. In, bi in the biological sciences, they explored the implications of the notion that order and complexity and structure arise in a self-organized way. That was the triumph of neo-Darwinism and so forth. And slowly, that idea is leaking out to the cognitive sciences, the human sciences, economics, etc. At the same time, we physicists have been busy trying to make sense of and build on and integrate the discoveries of quantum theory and relativity. And what we've been working out is the implications, really, of the idea that the universe is made up of relations. 21st century science is going to be driven by the integration of these two ideas. 
the triumph of relational ways of thinking about the world on the one hand, and self-organization or Darwinian ways of thinking about the world on the other hand. And also is that in the 21st century, our thinking about space and time and cosmology and our thinking about society are both going to continue to evolve. And what they're evolving towards is the union of these two big ideas, Darwinism and relationalism. Now, if you think about democracy from this perspective, a new pluralistic notion of democracy would be one that recognizes that there are many different interests, many different agendas, many different individuals, many different points of view. Each one is incomplete because you're, in a, you're embedded in a network of relationships. Any actor in a democracy is embedded in a network of relationships and you understand some things better than other things. And because of that, there's a continual jostling okay, and give and take which is politics. And politics is, in the ideal sense, the way in which we continually address our network of relations in order to achieve a better life and a better society. And I also think that science will never go away. And I'm finishing on this line. <laughs> In fact, I'll finish. Science will never go away.